And hi everybody and welcome to Around the Ancient Eight, our weekly look at men's and women's basketball right here on the Ivy League Digital Network. I'm Dan Loney, glad to have you with us today. Today we are going to preview the men's slate of games coming up this weekend and to join us is former Columbia Lion and current NBC Sports Network broadcaster Dallin Cuff. Dallin, thanks for a few minutes. Thanks a lot, Dan. Thanks for having me. Dallin, you've obviously seen a lot of Ivy League basketball this year. When you think back to October and you were previewing what might happen in the league, and now we're at this point of the year, what have really been the big storylines you've seen come to fruition this year? I think the first thing that comes to mind is who can compete with Harvard. I think when you look at the roster they had coming back after beating New Mexico, and then obviously adding Brandon, uh, uh, Brandon Curry and Kyle Casey to the mix, you think, you know, who, who can compete with these guys? How, how, how are, a, how are these guys going to gel? We all assume they gel pretty well. Took them a couple games, but they absolutely did. And then the question is, who's going to compete with them? And, and we've seen a couple people come to the forefront. Yale, obviously, beating them up in, at Harvard was a huge win. Uh, but still, they've, they've rolled through a lot of these games, particularly impressive on the road. Uh, it's really tough to win on the road in this league, and Harvard's done it. So when you look at the storylines, it's who's going to compete with Harvard, how are they going to step up, and then who's going to be that next team in the Ivy League? You know, is, is it, is, was it Princeton? Was it Yale? Columbia got picked eighth. Uh, I think I saw them a lot in the summer, and I actually thought they had an op opportunity to be pretty good, very young, but could be good. And they've shown everybody they're a pretty solid team within this league. So coming in, it was pretty much Harvard, and is there going to be anybody else? And we've got Yale, at least. So there's a battle down this last weekend. Well, being a former student athlete in the league at Columbia and obviously a fan of the league and now a broadcaster, What's really the state of Ivy League basketball right now? Youth, and that's a good thing because there's a lot of youth but a lot of talent. You look at this league, you know, and uh, the RPI ratings, you know, throughout the league, it's, throughout the season it's been between, you know, 15 and 18 or so, depending on which RPI service you're looking at. But the league has always been rated in the middle there and hasn't hit the 20s. And I think what we're seeing is a lot of these teams are bringing almost everybody back. I mean, Harvard's going to lose two guys, we understand that, but they've played without Kenyatta Smith, so that team's going to be – fantastic next year. I mean, Tommy Amaker's really got it going. Yale's bringing back the majority of their points scoring and rebounding. Columbia's bringing back everybody. Princeton's bringing back a good amount of guys, obviously losing T.J. Bray. Brown is bringing back everybody except McGonagall. I mean, it, it's really an impressive lot when you look at the talent coming back in this league. So I think we're in great hands, and the league is poised to be in a better situation now than it's been in, in quite some time because when you think about everybody that's coming back, there is no... There's no dog in the. There's no dog anymore in the league. There was always a team or two that you could kind of rack up on your schedule. Hey, we'll get a win there. That's not the case anymore. I mean, Dartmouth really has, has pulled out of that role they've played the last couple of years, beating Princeton at home. They have a couple other good wins under their belt in league play. So there's nobody that's that's you know head and shoulders behind anybody. And Harvard is a little bit ahead of everybody, but anybody can beat on any night here. So I think the youth that's coming back and the and the little bit of parity that's come across the league, the league that's, as a whole is very strong, and you see that in the non-conference wins that a lot of teams had. Well, and of course, you've got the call on the Harvard-Yale game coming up tomorrow night right here on the NBC Sports Network. Of course, Yale won the first meeting, but a win by Harvard tomorrow night will clinch them the outright title. So what do you expect to see in this game? Uh, well, first thing I want to say is Harvard winning at least a share of their fourth straight Ivy League titles is incredibly impressive. The first team to do that since Penn, Penn in the mid-90s. So they've really, they, they have an absolute powerhouse there. But Yale showed a kind of a blueprint to beat them. I mean, Yale really beat them up inside. Like, they, they found a way, and they've done a lot of teams to get penetration from the perimeter, and they were just destroying them inside in terms of getting drop-offs, getting layups, getting fouled. They're the, one of the best free-throw rates in the country, top ten in the country in terms of their free-throw rate. And Yale really sh showed how you can beat Harvard. You have to beat them off the bounce. And I think their athleticism inside, their ability to get to the free-throw line, their ability to offensive rebounds at time, were the difference in that game. Harvard didn't play a very good game offensively, but the surprising play at home was how poor Harvard was defensively. So I think when they go on the road at Yale, their defense first and foremost has to be stout. They have to find a way to keep those guards out of the lane. Javier Duran, if he's back to close to 100%, will help that team without a doubt. Without him in there, they're not nearly as dynamic. He played very well up in Cambridge. And, and they have to find a way to not foul him too. Like I said, Yale's great at the free throw line, but you saw when they lost to Columbia, they didn't get to the line much. When they lost at Princeton, they only had the line 18 times. Compared to the, they were getting the line nearly 34 times a game going up until last week. So they were living at the free throw line in league play. 
If you don't follow them, they start to struggle because they're bottom 50 in the country in field uh, in an effective field goal percentage. So if they don't get to the line, they can struggle to score. So it really comes down to can Harvard defend them? I think Harvard's going to find a way offensively to be efficient and effective as they always are. They're one of the top 50 teams in the country in defense offensive efficiency. They're very it's going to be top 100. Very, very good in terms of offensive efficiency, particularly in our league, the most efficient team. So that's not the concern. It's defensively. Can they keep them out of the lane? Can they, can they rebound? Can they not foul? And I think they'll be able to do it. Now, Yale playing at home, it's going to be a raucous environment in that amphitheater. You can't hear a thing there when it gets loud. So it's going to be an awesome game to broadcast. I'm excited to be there. And uh, it would be interesting to see if Yale can pull it off because we all remember last year going into that last weekend, it seemed like Harvard and Princeton were heading toward a, uh, a playoff. But then Princeton got swept on the road at Yale and at Brown. So if somehow the shoe is on the other foot and Harvard is, is swept at on the road at Yale and at Brown, we now have a playoff scenario. That's assuming Yale does their job on Saturday night. But we shall see. It's going to be a great game. Dallin, thanks for a few minutes. Thanks a lot, Dan. Really appreciate it. I had a good time. And don't forget, tomorrow we're going to be previewing the women's slate of games and we'll be speaking with veteran women's college basketball writer Mel Greenberg. Thanks for joining us here on Around the Ancient Eight.